Not since 1933 has Georgia had a contender for the heavyweight boxing title of the world. Bill Stribling Jr. from Macon fought Max Schmeling that year. Young Strib and Evander Holyfield have a lot in common. Both are known for being nice guys in a savage sport. Now, young Strib lost the title fight that July day in 33, so maybe 27-year-old Evander Holyfield will be the first Georgian to bring home that title. Holyfield is a man with a mission. What drives a man to put his body through torturous pain? To strain in sweaty agony? To stand against punishment when all instinct would move you to give up? His mission? The possibility in a fleeting moment in time to be the best in the world at what he does. He's faced that moment once before. It was Los Angeles, 1984, the Summer Olympics. Evander was favored for the gold and had advanced to challenge Kevin Berry in a semifinal bout. The controversy started when the referee called stop just as Evander KO'd the young New Zealander. Evander was disqualified. He brought home the bronze anyway. Disappointed, but not anywhere near ready to give up the mission. His professional record reads 23 and 0 with 19 knockouts. He's the former holder of the undisputed cruiserweight championship, owning belts from all three boxing associations. For the winner and new junior heavyweight holy staggered. But fighting back, he's he moved to the heavyweight division and waited patiently for his moment. Champion Mike Tyson delayed scheduling a destined fight with Evander and ended up losing the title to Buster Douglas. Now it's Evander's turn. The stage is set, Las Vegas, September 1990. Champion Buster Douglas will face Holyfield for the heavyweight title of the world. What is the strategy for Buster Douglas? He's bigger than you are, too. Well, a lot of, all the fighters that I fought, the heavyweight was bigger. And, and just as when Mike Tyson fought, everybody he fought was bigger than him as well. And it's not the size of the man, it's the fight in the man. Here we go. 13. To feed that fight, Holyfield is bulking up at Busybody Exercise Studio in South Atlanta. He trains under the only man to match Arnold Schwarzenegger's six Mr. Olympia titles, Atlanta's own Lee Haney. Woo! Come on, easy way. Come on, stay tight, concentrate. Holyfield does three grueling workouts a day, takes an hour and a half afternoon nap, pops enough dietary supplements to stock a pharmacy, and consumes over 4,000 calories a day in health-conscious foods just to maintain his 210 pounds. Come on, one more for number one. Come on, baby, you got it. One more. I'm with you. All right, baby, that's it, that's it. Evander is now training for a June fight against 10th-ranked Seamus McDonough. His management's not crazy about the idea. If Evander loses the June fight, he loses the chance to fight for the title in the fall. What if September never comes? You don't get nothing. I'm like, see, I look at Buster Douglas in September. He might say he hurt his shoulder. You know, they, they'll postpone this thing to next year. That's right. So that means this year I ain't making a money. I like my money now. <laughs> I'm like, don't hold my money, as they talk about it. But put my money in my bank. Let me get the interest. He says don't if he's supposed to be the best, there's money. little risk. Haney says Evander's biggest training problem now is staying in Atlanta, where he's in constant demand. So they'll finish their training in Houston for that reason. The guy just can't say no to people in Atlanta who want his time. Because the more you know about drugs, the easier it is to just say no. Did you know that over 80% of the crime... This February afternoon, he was shooting a public service announcement at the Warren's Boys Club. He was supposed to be napping. This is where he started boxing at the age of eight. He was the baby of eight children born to Annie Holyfield. He cut grass and sold concessions at Braves games to pay for his school clothes. 
but it was the boys club that groomed him for his career. Evander mixes it up with the boys at the club on some occasions, remembering that adult who gave him his first stab at success. My mother raised me and my father wasn't there, and I feel that the boys club had the men's in the club, in the club that I could look up to and get that kind of father figure. And so his boys club has given me all of this, and I know I can never give it all back, but if I can enlighten some of the young kids that that don't have a father, some of the kids that need someone to look up to, I want to be able to help them. Evander didn't meet his real father until he was an adult. His mom, Annie, had gotten pregnant by another man while separated from her husband. She kept Evander away from his real father until he turned 21. And then when I see my father, and really I ain't have anything to say, but I was glad that for his age he looked gray. I said, man, when I get older, I'm still looking gray. <laughs> Because he, I'm telling you, he's a very strong man, and he was still working because he loved working. And, and the things that he had done for his other kids and stuff, he did a good job. And once I got an opportunity to talk to him, I seen he took care of them. He would have took care of me if my mother would allow him, allow him to do so. When Evander met his father, he also met half-brothers he didn't know he had. The day we talked to Evander, two of those half-brothers, Mike and Ron, were spending the day with him at his house in Fairburn, the house he and his wife Paulette built less than a year ago. Paulette carved a permanent record of the family on the doorstep to the home. The Holyfield family now includes Evander Jr., he's six, and not impressed with what his father has to do to stay in shape. <coughs> Little sis Ashley is three. What about Miss Ashley? Well, you know, Ashley told me she wanted to be Sleeping Beauty. The <laughs> girls are different than me. I feel that people say I'm a male chauvinist. I feel that a woman need a good education because uh, kids are under the uh, under the woman, and when a woman have a good education, the kid learn a lot. So, if I heard want to be Sleeping Beauty, it don't take away anything. It kind of kind of fills my heart because I feel that she make a man a good husband. He don't have to worry about going anywhere. She be at home. Paulette, his bride of five years, is having their third child May twentieth. Evander picked the name Ewan for Evander Wynn. This kid is very special because this is the first kid that uh, I had something to do with for us. Let's have this kid, because she's like, I don't want any more kid. I said, no, I need one more son. Let's talk about Paulette and, and boxing. Does she go to your fights? Yes. The first seven professional fights I had, I didn't take her. Then the first professional fight I took her when I was fighting this guy, Cassandra Moody. And as I had him out, I had him against the rope and I was hitting him. First person I hollered, stop, don't hit him no more. It was her. You see the durability here of Moody. He's not the kind of... It took, I mean, all I had just to sit there. And then finally, he hit the guy, and the guy was going out over the ring, and he went back and hit. And I jumped up. I was like, oh, don't kill him, don't kill him. So she's learned to be cool now. Yeah, she, she, uh, she cheers, but um, she never get too emotional. She handled it very well now. You are so nice. Do you have a mean bone in your body? Well, if I did, I would go to the doctor and tell him to take it out. I don't need any mean bones. Evander wants to demonstrate for you tonight how he scowls at the fight, you know, this stern fight face when he gets Go ahead. <laughs> A lot of people think boxing is mean that you're hostile and you have to be mean. No, it's not because boxing is a control mentality. Because when you lose control, you'll lose the fight. When you become the champ, are you going to become, quote, flashier? Do you have to do a little bit of flash and trash to keep the pot up and to keep people's interest? Become a little bit of Muhammad Ali? No, not at all. I, it's just like Patty LaBelle said, you have to be yourself. And I'm saying, I think that was Ali, just flashy. Uh, with me, um, I'm kind of quiet, but I get the job done. He got it done to the tune of three and a half million in reward last year. His fight with Buster could earn him upwards of $10 million this year. Evander's part owner in two car dealerships as well. And now he's in the movie business. 
He and manager Ken Sanders invested $2.5 million in a movie produced by Ken's son called Blood Salvage. Are you in it? Yes. What do you play? I'm playing Evan the Holyfield. I'm the boxer. <laughs> and Evander's trainer, Lou Duva, plays the ref. Wait for the bell. Give me the bell there. <laughs> Sorry. It's just a blind pop. I better not find you around here later. He thinks he has about four more years as a professional boxer. Then he'd like to build recreation centers for kids and coach them. What motivates a man to undertake this kind of mission? Fame? Glory? Money? Well, in Evander's case, it may just be getting the job done, doing what he said he was gonna do. What is the one thing you always promised yourself as a child that you were gonna do for your mother when you became successful? I remember when I was like, about six years old, and we stand on Conley Street, and uh, we sit on the porch, and and when the Bray game let off, all the cars would come by, and I would always tell my mother, "I'm gonna get me a car, and I'm gonna buy you a house." And I was 16, 17. My mom said, "Oh, but he he gonna buy a house. Chevy gonna buy me a house." And as soon as I got from the Olympics, I bought my mother a house. Chevy. 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 That's me. Evander's movie, Blood Salvage, will be released in Atlanta May 25th.